Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's review, we are taking a tour uh, of a couple different brewers from the state of Washington. So we've got uh, contrasting styles and both are gonna be uh, from brewers I've never had anything from before. And while the styles are contrasting, they do have some commonalities. So not just being from the state of Washington, there's uh, some added ingredients into both of these classic beer styles. So we're gonna be starting with the lighter ABV of the bunch. This is Rooftop Brucos up on the rooftop. This is a holiday ale that's been spiced with ginger, orange zest, honey, and cinnamon. 6.3% ABV on this one. They're based in Seattle, Washington. Uh, for beer number two, this is Black Raven Brewing Company's Splinters. This is a Scotch ale that has been bourbon barrel aged. This is 10.8% ABV on this one, and they are based in Redmond, Washington. So we've got uh, two beer styles that uh, typically I don't do a ton of these. They're not ones that uh, are the easiest to find. There's not as many of these styles as say IPAs or stouts, but uh, they're still some of my favorites. I love holiday ales, I love scotch ales, and anytime you get some where the brewers get a little creative and they add some new ingredients into it, it always makes it more fun and exciting. So without further ado, we're gonna jump right in, starting with Rooftop Brucos up on the rooftop, a holiday ale that clocks in at 6.3% ABV. Okay, so jumping right in with the first beer of today's Washington State Craft Beer Brewer Review. We have got Rooftop Brucos up on the rooftop. Holiday ale, 6.3%, and it is spiced with ginger, orange zest, honey, and cinnamon. They're based in Seattle, Washington. So first thing first, in terms of label art, um, it's got a very festive Christmas tree and Santa with his reindeer pulling his sleigh up on the very top. It's probably a little hard to see, but it definitely uh, gets you in the holiday spirit, of course. And I did purchase this during the winter months. So we're gonna get this cracked. All right. Poured right in the glass here. I am using my stout glass. This is a pretty good all-purpose glass. Okay, getting this one poured. And not all holiday ales are the same. This is taking the lighter appearance approach. Uh, they kind of run the full gamut. They can be darker. Darker is a bit more common, but you do see light ones. This is probably the second or third lighter into the spectrum holiday ale I've done. It is in range, though you'll normally see them much darker brown. I can do a brown ale type color. But yeah, this is beautiful. It's kind of an ambery golden honey color. It looks very, very nice. Very, very active in terms of carbonation. I'm seeing a good mix of very small, tight, tiny bubbles and kind of medium. So it did form a decent head here. Uh, that's another category. It's kind of hit or miss. It's all over the board. Uh, typically, they do tend to be a bit more carbonated active, so they'll form a head. It just depends on how active it is, how tight that carbonation is. But it looks very, very nice, so let's give it a sniff. Yeah, that smells very nice. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, you can definitely smell the ginger, you can definitely smell the orange, you can definitely smell the cinnamon, and you can definitely smell the honey. So all of the added ingredients that they put in here really do come through on the aroma. It, it really comes through quite nicely, and really there's not anything that I would say is dominant. It just smells like a nice mix, and you can still sm clearly smell that nice malty backbone that holiday ales are known for. So let's just jump right in and take a sip and see what we think. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right away, nice and malty, nice, rich and malty. That comes through quite clearly. And the ginger absolutely is coming through. The honey is absolutely coming through. The orange, it's there. It's kind of more of a subtlety. And the cinnamon comes through but it's not like a red hot cinnamon. It's not artificial. This is real actual cinnamon. So it's really kind of clinging um, to the malt side. So the cinnamon really seems to be attracted to that malt and they're kind of pairing together and making like the cinnamon malt backbone for the other additives to go in. And it's that ginger and that orange and that honey. It's very, very nice. This is very, very nice. It's a really good blend of ingredients. You know, you, you see a lot of, you know, winter time beers that have similar or the same kind of added ingredients. And there's a reason for that. It, you know, just works in beer for one, especially in the beer styles that are typically brewed. And it certainly puts us all in mind of say apple cider, 
kind of flavorings and all sorts of confections that we're cooking around the holidays. And, um, you know, it really does work. It kind of puts you in the mood. Uh, granted, um, you know, we're, we're almost out of winter here. I'm filming this in the beginning of 2020, but uh, it's just been around the corner for me, even though this is coming up probably in September or October of uh, 2020. But nonetheless, very, very good. Very nice beer. Um, in terms of the body and mouthfeel, I'm gonna jump back in for one more dive, but the one thing I noticed right away was when you agitate around the palate, this one gets very, very creamy, very, very creamy, much, much thicker than, um, you know, with it just sitting static on the palate. So let's give it another sip. Buddy on this is a nice, robust medium. The mouthfeel is really quite nice. It's, it's got a lot more resistance than I anticipated it would for the ABV range, but because the body is a really big medium for this ABV range, having that extra resistance really makes it pair very well. So really nice body, really nice mouthfeel for the style, and certainly for the ABV. It's a bit bigger and bolder than I anticipated, but it's very, very nice. And on second sip, yeah, everything I experienced on first sip is really coming through. It's just coating more of these flavors around the pellet, so I'm picking up you know, some additional intensities. The ginger is quite prominent, as is that honey. The orange is kind of floating underneath those, but it's uh, very easy to detect. And I stand by it, that cinnamon is really binding to that maltiness, that malt bill. So it's almost like cinnamon bread, and then you're topping it with ginger and orange zest and just drizzling with honey. You could almost think of taking like a yeast bread and candying it in the oven. And it's like that in beer form. It's absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. In terms of finish, this one's, you know, it's a little longer than average. It's not super long. Holiday ales don't tend to have the longest finish in the world. Um, some barrel aged ones, which you can find occasionally, definitely do. But this is much more kind of status quo kind of uh, in the middle of the road for what you would anticipate. Really the only thing pushing it out a little bit is just that little bit of ginger and that little bit of residual honey and that slight malty aftertaste that just kind of pushes it out, but it's very, very faint on the end. Overall, it's, uh, it's really just got an average finish for the style, no question about it. In terms of balance, I really like the balance. They are a malty style and the malt comes through clearly. But the fact they added all these other ingredients and that they're just kind of working together really makes this a very, very special holiday ale. I'm a big fan. I'm gonna take my time, sip on this, come up my scores. When we come back, we will get to beer number two of today's review. That is Black Raven Brewing Company's Splinters, the bourbon barrel aged Scotch ale that clocks in at 10.8% ABV. Okay, so now jumping into the second beer of today's Washington State Craft Beer Review. We have got Black Raven Brewing Company's Splinters. This is a bourbon barrel aged Scotch Ale that clocks in at 10.8% ABV. They are based in Redmond, Washington. So in terms of label art, the label art on this one um, is relatively plain, but it's, it's clean and it's got a little raven up top. But on the back of the bottle, it's where it's particularly neat. They've got a little... Uh, picture of a couple ravens sitting in a tree and then there's a nice little description about this beer so it's uh, quite neat and yet again another brewer i've never had anything from so that's always exciting and this one a bourbon barrel aged scotch ale just sounds awesome to me oh and if you didn't notice the cap as well has a little raven on top so i'm gonna be gentle as i open this because i kind of want to save this cap it looks very neat and i know there is a trick if you ever want to save a cap that's particularly neat on a beer, not mess it up. If you stick a quarter on top of it before you pry, it keeps them more or less, It basically you're just undoing the ridges, but you keep it nice and flat on top. Little uh, pro tip for you. But nonetheless, let's get this poured right in the glass. All right, yeah, there we go. Now this Scotch Ale um, is a little bit on the lighter end of the spectrum for a Scotch Ale. This one has a little more caramelly appearance. This is another beer style that runs the gamut, kind of like barley wines. In fact, their color characteristics kind of run that same spectrum on average. They run from a little lighter, ambery, caramelly to the darker browns, but not pitch black like a stout 
um, unless it's say a black barley wine, which we've done that one. But uh, this one poured very nice. It is uh, quite effervescent, did form a pretty big head here. I'm gonna top that off just a little bit. Got a little running down the side of the bottle. That's okay. We're okay with that. Uh, visually, yep, that's a very, very dark amber, uh, very caramelly in appearance. I can tell you it does have quite a pungent aroma. I can smell it from here. And the bourbon barrel is what's jumping out at me from about a foot and a half away. And it formed a nice head, so let's get right up over it for a proper sniff. Yeah, you can really smell that bourbon. Absolutely smell that bourbon. I can tell you, really, the bourbon is so overwhelming on the nose on this one that the classic, what I would expect to smell from the malt bill in a Scotch Ale, I'm not really detecting. It's just very strongly a bourbon, which uh, actually kind of makes me excited because that means there's a strong likelihood the bourbon's not going to get lost in this. And I fully expect with this rich, deep, big beer that the classic Scotch Ale is going to come through as well, but it's going to have a nice bourbon hit. So without further ado, let's jump right in and give it a sip. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's really nice. This absolutely has a classic, absolutely spot on uh, classic Scotch ale taste to it. The malt bill really comes through clearly. It tastes like the quintessential Scotch ale that I think of in my head when I think of a Scotch ale. It's got this nice bourbon presence to it. I'll tell you, the bourbon really is about 50-50 with the natural intrinsic flavors of the Scotch Ale. It's not oppressive, but I was right. It being that heavy on the nose means that it is going to translate well in the beer. Scotch Ale is a big, bold, pungent beer, naturally anyway. It's got a very big flavor forward element to it. And having a bourbon barrel backing to it especially this that present is really giving the barrel a chance to speak in the beer because the scotch ale is such a big bold pungent flavor that it could easily drown out the barrel side of the beer they did a really good job balancing uh the time in the barrels with the base beer to really let both elements speak and it really is speaking 50 50. now a lot of scotch ales they're big beers they sometimes can have a little bit of a boozy bite up front this one really doesn't. There's only the slight suggestion and it's really cause mentally, oh, there's bourbon barrel, but it doesn't really taste boozy at all. It's actually quite smooth. It's quite smooth. It's quite nice. Classic Scotch ale flavor with this nice bourbon quality just mixed with it. And it's really, really nice. I'm gonna jump in for body and mouthfeel. Think on these flavors a bit more. This is easily a medium heavy body and the mouthfeel is quite viscous. It's got a lot of resistance to it. 10.8, I expected it would have a pretty robust body and a pretty resistant mouthfeel, but honestly, I'm impressed by this beer's presence. It's got a much larger, heavier, denser, more present body than I anticipated, even for the ABV range, certainly, and the mouthfeel equally, equally so. It's got a lot of resistance to it. It's very resistant and it pairs perfectly with the body. They're absolutely harmonious. Another thing I should say right away, this beer absolutely gets lush, silky, creamy, and beyond thick if you start to agitate around the palate. It gets so creamy and dense. Um, it just takes on even more presence on the palate, which is not a bad thing. Now, in terms of the finish, you might be thinking a Scotch Ale that's been bourbon barrel backed that's this bold and pungent would have a very, very long finish. It does not. It does not have a long finish at all. It's very clean. It's very crisp. And I don't mean crisp in the sense of drying. I just mean in the way that it finishes. It's got this crispness to it, this just kind of biting bump, and then it's done. There's just the slightest suggestion of lingering bourbon and lingering Scotch Ale malt bill floating in the back. But for all intents and purposes, it ends very much at an average rate. Just a little ghost, a little whisper 
of, of that residual bourbon and, and malt bill, but it's it's got just very much an average finish. I kind of anticipated as big and bold as this was, that it would really have a nice long present finish, but it, it does not, and that's not a bad thing. I'm just telling you, just so you know, it's very clean. In terms of the balance, I absolutely love it in this beer. 100% perfect classic, very well done Scotch Ale. Very well done Scotch Ale malt bill. And then that's paired with this bourbon and they really are 50-50. The bourbon you do get first, but as soon as you swallow within that first second, boom, there's that classic Scotch Ale malt bill and then they're just on even parity. The whole time it's on an even plane and it's 50-50 Scotch Ale and bourbon and it's positively delicious. This is such a well done beer. I am a massive fan. I'm gonna take my time, sip on this, comb my scores. When we come back, we will get both beers ranked from top to bottom. Okay, now we're gonna get both of these delicious beers ranked, starting with the Rooftop Brewing Companies. Up on the rooftop, this was a holiday ale that was brewed with ginger, orange zest, honey, and cinnamon. 6.3% ABV on this one. They're based in Seattle, Washington. So, starting with the aroma. The aroma on this beer was very pronounced for this style and certainly for the ABV range. I think uh, the pungency of additives that they had in there is what really did it. It was well above average. It gets an eight out of 10. For the taste, this was very much a classic holiday ale. Very rich, very malty. But I come back to their added ingredients. Uh, not really all that crazy in the grand scheme of things as additive flavors are concerned in a winter type ale, which certainly holiday ale is. Uh, but the way that they did it was very nice. The balance of the ingredients was very nice. And it really did kind of kick that taste up to another level for me. I really liked what they did with this. It's a perfect 10 out of 10. For the body, this body was very much classic holiday ale, but if anything, I was impressed uh, by the breadth that it had, even more so than a typical holiday ale. Um, they can kind of range in ABVs. This one's kind of in the middle, but it had a really nice body to it uh, that kind of was even more robust than I anticipated. It does get a perfect 10 out of 10. For the mouthfeel, similar story. This was very much a case of a classic holiday ale mouthfeel, but yet again, it just had a little more substance to it. There was a little more resistance, a little more viscosity, and uh, it gave the beer just an added layer of breadth. Gets a 10 out of 10. Moving on to the finish. Um, holiday ales kinda, they're one of those beer styles, they're all over the board. And I'll be honest, with how pungent the aroma was on this one, and certainly how pungent the flavors were, and how readily I could pick them all out, I really did expect that this was gonna have a much longer than average finish, uh, but it didn't, uh, which is not a bad thing. It was certainly in the average realm. High end, it gets a six out of 10. For the head and retention, this one did a pretty good job. Uh, not a beer I would imagine you would find on draft somewhere. I suspect that they probably bottle all of this and don't keg it. Uh, but poured at home, it did a pretty good job. It was certainly above average. It gets a 7 out of 10. For the appearance, uh, the appearance on this one, it was fine. It was certainly in range, but I would say overall, it was quite a bit lighter than your average. It wasn't out of whack. It certainly was in the color range that you would expect to see in a holiday ale. But they are typically uh, quite a bit darker than this. Uh, not a bad thing, it was just the observation. It gets a seven out of 10. For the balance, I mentioned this talking about the taste, and the balance on this beer was really quite excellent. It is uh, naturally a very malt-centric beer style, and the malt bill in this was really, really well done. It tasted very, very good. And then all of the additive ingredients were just this wonderful added bonus, and they paired very, very well with that malt bill, and you could taste every little element of this beer independently. I absolutely love it. They nailed the balance. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Feeling in the tangible. Subjectively, I loved it. It's a great style. It's not one that you can get all the time, and a very well done holiday ale is very enjoyable. I thought this one was indeed. I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style. So this beer overall was very, very nice, very enjoyable. The whole drinking experience was excellent. It did lose some points in a few categories, uh, but frankly, where it did lose the points were things that weren't really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things about what made this beer what it is uh, compared to other beers of the style. So frankly, I think what they did with this, they really pulled off a winner here. I only docked one point overall. It gets a nine out of 10 
which brings the total score on rooftop brew co's up on the rooftop to an 87 out of 100. This is a well above average offering. If you're a fan of holiday ales, this is definitely one to see. This is one of the best ones I've had in recent memory. I do highly recommend this one. Moving on to beer number two. This is Black Raven Brewing Company's Splinters, a Scotch ale that's been bourbon barrel aged. 10.8% ABV on this one. They're based in Redmond, Washington. Uh, starting with the aroma. The aroma on this beer was indeed quite pronounced. Um, you kind of would expect that with a barrel aged beer. It doesn't necessarily translate into it, but it typically does. And it certainly did in this case. It gets a nine out of 10. For the taste, very, very enjoyable beer. Um, frankly, I thought that it had very much an absolutely classic Scotch Ale flavor profile. And I'm not talking wee heavy with the peated malts and, you know, some people use them interchangeably, but that's most often where you see it. A standard Scotch Ale can indeed have peated malts. Some do, some don't. Same thing with wee heavies, but I do typically see that much more commonly with a wee heavy. That being said, this was not uh, in what you see normally in, in, that, in that scope of things. It didn't have that smoked peaty malty back. This was very much just a classic Scotch Ale malt bill and it was executed wonderfully. Um, in terms of the bourbon barrel, it was nice, but I would have liked a bit more presence to come through. It was there, it was there in aroma, it was there in flavor, but I would have liked a little more intensity from the barrels. Uh, I did give it a nine out of 10. For the body, the body on this beer was huge. 10.8, that's a nice high ABV for a Scotch Ale, and this thing had real breadth to it. It gets a 10 out of 10. For the mouthfeel, yet again, uh, we're just a couple beers here. I had really great uh, winners on my hands with body and mouthfeel and how symbiotic they were. Um, the mouthfeel was pretty much what I expected for a Scotch Ale, but again, it had a lot more resistance, a lot more viscosity that just perfectly matched that bigger, heavier body. It gets a 10 out of 10. For the finish, this was a category that I was surprised by. Kind of both of these beers surprised me. Um, with the pungency of the aromas and the pungency of the flavors, I did expect that the finish would go a little longer. Those Scotch Ales, they do kind of run all over the board. Some are very short, uh, some are very long, some are in the middle. This was just on the high end of average for me. I, I, the, the barrel side of this beer wasn't quite as intense. And I think if it were, it would have helped extend that finish out just a little bit longer. But don't get me wrong, it was uh, certainly on the high end of average range here. It gets a 6 out of 10. For the head and retention, uh, this beer did an absolutely tremendous job. It really did. Uh, among the best for port at home, it gets a 9 out of 10. For the appearance, um, yet again, these both were beers that surprised me a little bit. Both of them were on the lighter end of the spectrum from what you would typically see for the style. Both certainly still in range, but uh, a little bit of a deviation from the norm. Uh, on this one, above average, 7 out of 10. For the balance, okay. So while I personally would have liked more intensity from the bourbon barrel on this, frankly, the balance between the malt bill and the bourbon barrel really was very, very well executed. Um, for me, it came down to just a pungency thing and what I think would have helped extend out the finish, but that's its own separate little categories by which I'm judging. For how they actually broke down the balance and struck the balance between the barrel, the barrel presence, and the malt bill, they absolutely nailed it. It does get a perfect 10 out of 10. Feeling in the intangible, subjectively, I loved it. I did. Um, you know, there are a few beers that I have that I don't have something, you know, uh, we're all seeking beer perfection. And uh, that's a very high yardstick. But uh, frankly, when I enjoy a beer and, you know, it's, it's just very well executed, subjectively, I typically, you know, I'm really thinking hard on it. It's not necessarily about the scores that I'm representing here. It's about the experience for me. And I loved every drop of this one. It gets a 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style. Uh, yet again, this is another beer here that lost some points, <clears throat> reasonably big points in a few categories. Now for me, for the style, I really appreciated this one, what it brought to the table. There were a few areas specific to a Scotch Ale that gosh, you know, if this had just been tweaked and it, and it is what it is, but overall, I really enjoyed the beer. And in particular, I gotta mention this again, this malt bill, this was just an absolute classic Scotch Ale malt bill that was just executed beautifully. But overall, where it did lose points, they were kind of significant to me to the point that it made a bigger impact on a Scotch Ale. Uh, but for me, I did still think it was well above average. I did give it an eight out of 10, 
which brings the total score on Black Raven Brewing Company Splinters to an 88 out of 100. So we're looking at a whopping one point spread here. Uh, two different styles, both from the state of Washington, an 87 and an 88. If you're a fan of either of these styles of beers, these are definitely two to seek. I would recommend either of these to a fan of the style at all, and it's always fun to try new beers. These were both very, very well done, and I do think you will enjoy them. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live to YouTube, you can click the notification bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.